suicide is running so rapid, um, let's just continue to pray for those who feel hopeless because we know in Christ that there is hope. He is the hope of glory. And let's just pray that the Lord will bring souls in, that they'll understand that they don't have to live beneath their privileges, that God has prepared and made a way for them. If we don't have any spoken prayer requests, any unspoken prayer requests, you can signify by the raising of your hand. And we're going to go before the Lord in prayer. If you can, we'll please stand. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you right now, oh God, for this day, Lord. We thank you for your keeping power, your loving kindness, and your tender mercies, Lord. We thank you for how you have kept us all the day long, oh God, from danger seen and unseen, oh God, for covering us and being a hedge of protection around us, oh God, as we have went to our several destinations, oh God. You've been so gracious and merciful to us, oh God, and we don't take it for granted. Lord, I just thank you right now, oh God, for giving us a mind, oh God, to want to come into the house of God, to fellowship with the people of God, even on this day, oh God, to hear of your truth, your word, oh Lord, for thy word is truth. We thank you right now, oh God, for this time of fellowship, oh God. Bless our pastor as he brings forth the words of the life, oh God. Speak through him, oh God, that he'll speak to your people, oh God. Give us what we have need of, oh God. Edify us, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Exhort us and comfort us, oh God. Help us, oh God, to run this race, oh God, to continue, oh God, in the faith, oh God. Help us to earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints, oh God. Help us right now to stand on your word, to stand on your promises and your truth, Lord. Touch those, oh God, that have unspoken prayer requests, oh God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. You know, oh God, every prayer request, oh God. You know everything that we have need of, oh God, even if we don't speak it, oh God. Touch those, oh God, that they're dealing with depression, oh God, and suicide. We bind that spirit right now in the name of Jesus, oh God. Help right now those that are feeling hopeless, oh God. Those that are grieving, oh God. Those that are sick, even in their body right now. Cover and touch right now from the crown of the head to the soles of the feet right now in the name of Jesus. Send deliverance right now, even in this place right now, oh God. Walk up and down each and every pew, oh God. Saturate even now on this Bible class, this place with your presence, oh God. Sing your anointing, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you right now, oh God, for what you've done in our lives. We thank you for what you're doing in our lives. We thank you, oh God, for all things, oh God. We just praise and lift up your holy name. We glorify your name, oh God. We come to give you worship, oh God, even on today, oh God. We love you, Lord. We lift up your name, oh God. Bless, Lord Jesus, each and every person connected, oh God, to this place and this assembly, oh God. Each and every family, oh God. Children, oh God. Lord, bless our children, oh God. God. Touch them right now from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. Even protect and watch over them. Keep them, oh God, from the snares of the enemy right now in the name of Jesus. Bless even right now this season of prom and graduation, oh God. Protect the teenagers, oh God, the high school graduates, oh God. Even those that are in college that are taking finals, oh God. Just cover us. Be a fence around us, oh God. Have your way right now, oh God. Continue to unite us and bind us in love, oh God, that we'll grow and flourish into what you have called for us to be in these last and evil days. And we just give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank
How are they increased that trouble me? And I mean, um, and it's, you notice that as an exclamation point, and so it's really not a question, it's rhetorical. Uh, it's not a question, it's a statement. He said, them that are troubling me are increased. They're troubling me. Um, it's, it's a statement of fact. The background to this is that his son Absalom um, had fell out of favor with his father and Absalom wanted to, um, really wanted to take over. He wanted to take over and so uh, he turned on his father. He turned on his father. And so it says he was fleeing from Absalom, his son. David was fleeing from him. And it's one of the things that David did quite a bit. He ended up, you know, you know he had to run from Saul. <laughs> and um, really, if you look at it, all the time it was about power. It was about power. Uh, that Saul didn't like the fact that uh, uh, that David had influence. You know, remember what the people said that David had um, slew Goliath. He said Saul has killed his thousands, but David his tens of thousands. And so Saul didn't like that. He didn't like it at all that they were um, that they were giving David that much credit. So here, and one of the wonderful things about David, um, and I think this is probably true for anybody in the music industry that I've encountered, when they go through something, it's a song. <laughs> when, when they deal with something, they get a song. <laughs> you know, they had this kind of joke about Taylor Swift, I guess, every time she break up, she write a song. <laughs> <laughs> she break up with somebody she write a song about. <laughs> um, but it's like that gifting is in them and that's how that's how they deal with things. That's how they deal with things. And so David is like that. And that's why we find a whole lot of what he experienced is had been converted to a song. I mean he had he written, he'd been motivated to write songs as a result of it. So, um, here he says, Lord, how are they increased that trouble me? Well, if you uh, look at it, uh, if you do uh, some of the research on it, that Absalom, um, Absalom actually was increasing, Absalom was increasing his number. Um, uh, you, you, we don't have to go to this, but I'll read 2 Samuel 15 and 12. It says, And Absalom sent, sent for Ethiophel, the, the Danite, David's counselor, from his city, even from Gilo, while he offered sacrifice, sacrifices. And the conspiracy was strong. For the people increased continually with Absalom. The conspiracy was strong. For the people continued, um, the people increased continually with Absalom. That's Second Samuel 15 and 12. And so David sees that. He sees that these folks are increasing that his enemy is increasing. And um, he realizes that uh, he's going to be in a serious battle. He's going to be in a serious battle. And so it, the question is, and the, the, the second clause of that first verse says, many are they that rise up against me. Many are they that rise up against me. And he's in a particularly peculiar place because he's the king. He's supposed to have, you know, soldiers, chariots, and 
He's supposed to have the most people on his side. But that is not the case in this situation. That is not the case. Verse number two, it reads, Many there be which say of my soul, there's no help for him in God. There, there's many that are saying that God not even going to help him. God not going to help him. He's in that kind of trouble. And I realize that he's got to know. He's got, I mean, he's looking at the numbers. And you know, like I said, David's been there before. He was, he was running and hiding uh, because Saul wanted to kill him. But not since he's been king like this. And you know what? Can anybody say, tell me what is particularly peculiar or, I guess, problematic with this current issue? What do you think is particularly problematic? Yeah, that's, I mean, I think that's an issue. And one of the things I would say to that is that David is really being very transparent. Now, as you read the psalm, it certainly turns, the, the, um, um, the tone changes. And this is what happens, though, when David, is, like I said, he's being very transparent. But there's something here that makes this episode um, extremely problematic for any individual, yes. Is it because he's in a position of authority and he don't realize the authority well, that's good. That's good supposition. I mean, we wouldn't argue about that much, but to me, there's something a little more that's is a little simple, yes. Yeah. I'm thinking about the standpoint that this is my son. That my That's son. what I was looking for. Now, all of what you were saying is right, yes. but can you imagine this is his son? Right. Somebody said it? Okay, this is his son. This is his son. That, um, as a matter of fact, uh, I was trying to think of the text. He said, I could have borne it had it not been my familiar friend, they of my own household. Yeah. Don't you know that make it worse when there's people that's close to you? Right. Lord have mercy. You know, you can, you can handle hurt from a lot of different directions, but when it's somebody that you're close to, somebody that you, you or that, I mean, you're related to, you know, you're tight with, I mean, you know, you can have friends that back, uh, uh, turn their back on you or treat you a certain way. But when it's your best friend, Lord have mercy. Or if it's a family member, brother or sister, you know, you can, you can, I heard somebody say it the other day, I was watching something, they said, you know, uh, uh, their husband cheated with somebody, but what made it worse, it was their sister. <laughs> you know, if it had not been my sister, if it was, you know, would that just, <laughs> that just added more, I don't know what you would say, it would just, I mean, it just made it worse. Right, it just made it, just made it worse. But that's part of the reason why the enemy seeks to turn those that are close to us on us. Because that does create more havoc and more pain, Pastor Hill. Like you were saying that, it made me think about that movie Ooh. that we saw, Sarah. You know, when everybody else doubted, but when her husband stood out, look at he was doubting. Uh -huh. it was yeah, that made it worse. Before. Yeah, that made it worse. So she was really standing alone, huh? Right. You know, seemingly alone, did not but you know, so that to me is the thing here that just stands out so much that um, uh, it, it's his son. It's his son, yes. Because we, we see it every day. And mm -hmm. you know, the Lord says there's nothing to do with his son. Yeah, that's true. Absolutely. I mean, 
it, it is really, it's really just so true and it's so unfortunate because, you know, um, sometimes we let, there, there are people that we don't hardly let get that close to us. But there's some folks we can't help but to let get close because they start out close. They already close. And then that, when, they, when they hurt you, boy, that's, that's a hurt that's not like anything else. You know, that, 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 that's a serious hurt. So, he says, many are they that rise up against me. Verse number two. Many there be which say of my soul, there is no help for him in God. Verse number three. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. My glory and the lifter up of mine head. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy heel. What I want, what I want to do, let me stop there. What happened? Oh, the bar blew out. Yeah, because if y'all shoot me, that means I don't want to know. I don't want to duck into the bullet. Yeah, I think it's our um, projector bug. I think it's our projector bug gone down. Wow, it could have did that quietly. <laughs> Tell you, those gloves cost about $300. Yeah, yeah. They're very expensive. They're very expensive. Yeah, they're very expensive, absolutely, which is why most times they want them mounted, because when you move them, you can actually, you know, cause that to happen. All right, well, that means I, I hope y'all got your Bible, at least on your phone or something, or in your heart. You got the, you got the whole Bible in your heart. <laughs> My God. And don't be trying to blame Tell. Tell didn't do it. <laughs> that, but you know, you got to think about it. I don't know how long we've had that. We haven't. And so it probably was about time for it to, 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 to blow. It's probably about time for it. So uh, I can't think that we've ever actually had to change that bug. Yeah. So anyway, where was I? What did I say? Four, three and four. Um, oh, what I was about to say is, when you look at this, because it turns real quickly, right? And verse number three says, but thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory and the lifter up of mine head. Tonight, what I wanted to talk to you about, and I'm, I know I'm not going to finish this tonight, I'm going to start this, but we'll, we'll continue it. But... Uh, uh, this the idea of the difference between being a victim and a victor. Oh Lord, oh Lord. The difference between being a victim and a victor. And as I said to you, I know I'm not going to finish this tonight. I'm going to start this. But but I want you to know there is a difference. There is a difference. You can have similar circumstances, but there's, a, there's something that causes a person not to be a victim, but to be a victor. Um, actually, I'm mean, Sister Johnson doesn't mind me saying it. It was something that we were talking about uh, when she came through that cancer. And I think... Um, you know, people would call it cancer survivors, it was yeah. cancer survivors, and you gave me another term. Now, it was something else. I don't know if you remember what you said, Sister Johnson. Yeah, I was saying, my sister told me to stop, stop saying I'm a survivor. I am, that, um, well, <laughs> well, I, I, when you said it, it had so much power behind it. I was like, that's, that's powerful. It's like what she was saying that you the more so that's why I don't say that that stopped me from saying it. For, for saints. For saints, you you didn't just survive cancer, you overcame it. Lord have mercy. You overcame it. Um, and it's important to make this distinction. 
And there is a reason that the distinction is there. Because otherwise, you are a victim. You hear people talking about being a victim of circumstances. I'm a victim of my circumstance. Well, uh, being a victim versus being a victor is really a kind of subtle thing. It's really very subtle. I'm going to take you to a passage and I'll be able to show this to you in a minute. But I want to get through this. Because it's, um, well, let's look at this. David could, be, could have been saying, you know, um, I was just trying to do what God wanted me to do. I was trying to be a good king, good father, and my son turned on me. I'm a victim. <clears throat> and saints have to be careful that we don't adopt Amen. the victim mentality. Amen. Lord have mercy. Amen. That we don't adopt the mentality of victimization. Amen. Then, you know, it's like those first few verses he wrote, he, he, he said, everybody against me. Everybody doing me wrong. Poor me. And, and Lord, this just ain't right. <laughs> you know I don't deserve this, Lord. I don't know why you're letting this happen to me. You know I've been so good. <laughs> I mean, and I hear it sometimes from people. I really think it's a very common thing among the saints yeah. that we accept the position of a victim. Because the, the victim gets um, pity. The victim you know, if, 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 you know, you know, somebody, if you're talking to someone and they're talking about the stuff they're going through and how people have done them and how wrong it has been, and what, what do you say? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you can't help it. You, you can't help but to kind of identify with them a little bit, right? <laughs> You know, very seldom do you say, stop that. <laughs> now, I, I hope don't nobody say that. <laughs> if all of us will shut up. <laughs> I, I hope we don't be that callous. <laughs> but, but um, you know, what, what, what you find yourself doing is getting in there with them. Amen. What did you say? You adopt it. I mean, because really, when they're doing it, they actually want people to join them. Okay. Now, in other words, they want they want you to co-sign. Say, so, you know what? You're right. You you have been done wrong. You are a victim. I totally. Mm, mm, mm. I feel bad for you, baby. <laughs> you know, I mean, you start. I mean. You know, and, and you know, we call that ministering to them. <laughs> I'm gonna pray for you. Oh, we, yeah, you, you do have it bad. Mm. I'm gonna pray right now. <laughs> you know. But then we start bringing up our, you know, Or we start, being, yeah, we start, yeah. You know, I remember when that happened to me. They did me like that. I'm telling you, it's a terrible thing. They did me like that. Mm. <laughs> I took, I took a class one time about uh, and they were talking about um, positive and negative reinforcement mm. and they say if a, if, a, if a kid falls and you become hysterical the kid will become hysterical and absolutely. every time they fall they will expect that reaction oh right? absolutely and they, you know and that's what they'll do and matter of fact they'll, they'll fall because they want it right <laughs> but if you if you say to them hey you're all right and you pick them up yeah then they the next time they fall they will get up and dust themselves off. Yeah. The worst thing you can do 
is to be, you know, uh, oh baby, come on, man. oh look at that, and that's so, that, that's so. I mean, really, and you, and, and some parents, and some parents make a mistake, and children are very smart. They'll, 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 they'll put that in their catalog, and they'll use it. And they, next thing you know, they, uh, when they get, they fall down, they come in the house. No, well, look. <laughs> They they cataloged it. They they know that to get them a sucker. <laughs> they to get them some some attention, and they they gonna use it all the time. You have to be so careful, with that, Sister Johnson. Yes, it, it was. Um, she did tell me to stop saying that I was a survivor. That I am a conqueror. You are a conqueror. Yeah, That's right. But in the, even when I when I went through that, when I diagnosed with breast cancer, you know. I, I took that thing real personal. Mm -hmm. Like, why me? Mm -hmm. she said, why not you? Yeah. You know, it's like, you know, because she been through some different things. Yes. And it's like, you know, none of us are exempt from it. Yes. But through that is when the Lord allowed me to see it. Then when I help, you know, when I talk to people and, and you try you know, to my, my 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 testimony and so forth, yeah. and I listen to people, sometimes I have to withdraw myself because people do want. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they want you to join them in the victimization. But mm -hmm. I, 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 the thing that the Lord blessed me to be able to, you know, when I'm listening to people, it's like God don't come to pity parties. Yeah. He just, he just, well, because see, God. He's God, mm -hmm. and we can't. I mean, approaching Him like that, as if you know, He's not that parent who's gonna come show you your little bruised arm, and, you know, and you gonna expect Him to, you know. Be all like, oh, because he know what's really going on with it. That's a scratch. You all right? <laughs> he know what's really happening. You're not that hurt. You're not that hurt. Well, the it's important, I think, that we uh, do understand. I like that I, that that change of mentality. You know, because there's a big difference between you know I'm a survivor and I'm a conqueror. So what's the difference? In other words, the, the cancer was winning. I survived it. But if I'm a conqueror, I was beating it. I beat, Lord have mercy. Yeah, I beat it. Yes, Miss Reed. So I said if you get attacked by a bear and, and you escape with your life, you survive the bear attack. But if you get attacked by a bear and you kill the bear, you're, you you conquered the bear, right? mm -hmm. and, you, and you overcame the bear. Right. No, absolutely. Um, I, no, I don't recommend bear fighting. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not all together. I'm trying to follow your metaphor. <laughs> because see, what I want to do is I want to take you to another place where you win even if you have to run. Amen. You're a conqueror even if you have to run. See, this is the part that I think we struggle with. It's like the difference between being a survivor of that breast cancer and a conqueror was a change your perspective about it. She went through the same, it was the same treatment. She followed the same process. But what happened was at the end of the process, instead of saying I survived it, in other words, I gave it, you're giving that a whole lot of power. Mm -hmm. If you outrun the bear, you did a pretty good job. <laughs> in my estimation, if you can outrun it, I'd say, yeah, that'd be, I'd rather see you outrun it than try to fight it, to be honest with you. <laughs> I've been <laughs> kind of tickled lately about that. Well, I don't, really, I haven't been tickled. I've been curious about it. They, they, they talked about all these alligators um, running around in Florida and going up in people's backyards and, and in that swimming pool. They, they go in your swimming pool, they be laying in the bottom of it, and they're waiting on somebody that. I don't know about you, but before I go in any swimming pool, I'm going to be looking at the bottom. I'm going to make sure there is nothing down there because, you know, if I have to fight it, I'll fight it. But my preference is. 
I would prefer not to have a fight. This is like if one of them, if one of them grabbed one of my grandkids, yeah, they're going to be in for a fight. Yeah. I'm going to be trying to get them about their mouth. Yeah. But I'd rather not have to have that fight. <laughs> that would be my, that'd be my rap. Um, let me, let me, let me take you back to the change that David makes here. Because so what makes the difference here between him being a victim and being a victor is this. Verse number three. He says, but thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. Now, I want you to know this. The people that were that I outnumbered him in verses one and two still outnumbered him in verse number three. Lord have mercy. The, the person that was after him in verses one and two was still after him in verse number three. The difference is he added God to the equation. And he didn't just add God in you know, just in thought. He talked about what God was to him. Yes. Lord, have mercy. He said, God, he said, thou art a shield for me. You know, I just realized you had your hand up, uh, Sister Felice. Do you remember what you wanted to say? Oh, I, I, I know we're using the word victory in my vocabulary as low, but is, is victorious in, in that? Absolutely. I, I would say that if you... I mean, I think I started out saying there's a difference between being a victim and being uh, a victor. Yeah. And I'm, I'm submitting to you, to all of us, that in every situation, though we have been victimized, we are still victorious. That's what I want us to get tonight. Yes, I, I want us to know that, that like, like David, uh, it was a terrible thing that Saul was trying to kill him. It was a terrible thing. He got a lot of folks against him. But what he decided was that, that none of that mattered. In verse number three, when he considered who was his helper, what he realized is they in trouble. Oh, have mercy. I'm not the one in trouble. The ones after me, they was in trouble. Let me tell you something. Even if they jumped you and they, they, they beat you out, uh, physically, I'm going to tell you this. They still in trouble. Matter of fact, they in more trouble. I mean, one of my favorite verses in I mean, it's 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. Says it's a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. They get the worst woman they ever had in their life and putting their hands on you. That's that's why you got. That's why he said uh, he said um, uh, um, uh, that if you uh, 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 then Romans chapter twelve is that last verse talking about heaping coals of fire on them. Uh, talking about. Uh, when you pray, when your enemies are, uh, let's just go to it. I don't know. I'm, just, I'm, I'm about to mess it up and I need to, let me just go to the Romans, Romans chapter 12. This, my Lord, I thank you. I believe I had that right. Romans 12. 12, 20. Yeah. Yeah, here, yeah. let's start at verse number, verse, well, let's, let's start at verse number 18. Verse number 18. It said, if it be possible, as much as lies in you, live peacefully with all men. Now, I remember when I first was, got saved and I read that verse, that sounded like I can fight. He <laughs> said, as much as lies in you. So if I tried not to fight, and they decided they was going to fight me, I had God's permission to <laughs> wear them out. To wear them out. But that's really not what this verse is saying. It's saying we still have to do our part no matter what part they play. Because matter of fact, you get a better understanding when you pick it up in verse 19. He says, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, 
Vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirsts, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt he cause a fire on his head. So, he said, and, and, and what he's saying here is that um, if you don't actually have to give them drink, and if they're hungry, you don't actually have to feed them. But he is saying that um, you can be nice to them. They're being mean, you be nice to them. Because that's what he called a fire on them, because God is seeing it. Because why? Vengeance is not mine. I'm going to tell y'all, we help a whole lot of people by, by taking vengeance ourselves. We help a whole lot of people that would be in a whole lot of trouble for messing with us because we try to take care of ourselves. And God said, okay, since you got it, I ain't going to get them. We ain't going to double team them. <laughs> since you're going to get them, I ain't going to get them. But if, if you step back, see, Right here, this was silent. This is what the world said. If we let people do stuff to us, we are victims. No. But if God gonna get them, who won? We're not victims. We're victorious. What happens too often is we try to fight the battle ourselves. Instead of letting God fight. Instead of us adopting a posture that, you know what, um, uh, I'm not going to let what you're doing push me off my position. I'm going to stay where I am and do what I'm supposed to do. Serve God the way I'm supposed to serve God. Yes. Yes. Yes, they shall prosper and eat the fruit thereof. That's right. Yeah. Well, I mean, remember what the example that Jesus gave. I mean, remember they, 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 they said unto him, if you be the king, we'll come down. And they were mocking him and everything. And in one place he says, uh, do you not think that uh, if I called on my father, he will send angels? I mean, he said 10,000 angels at my call. But he didn't do it. Then he's on the cross. He'd have been, he been mocked. He'd have been ridiculed. These folks are still talking about him. They didn't spit on him. And they, they, they nailed him to the cross with something, he, with things he hadn't done. And he says, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. That's the example we have. Now you tell me, who was the victim and who was victorious? Was Jesus a victim or was he a victor? But now he looked like a victim. That's why the Bible says he was sown in weakness, but raised in power. You look weak going down. You don't look weak sometimes because you walked away. But I'm going to tell you what, what we need to be operating from. We need to be operating from strength under control, power under control. There's some people that got power that's not under control. Power under control. And when we do that, it's, it's called quiet strength. Lord have mercy. You have quiet strength. And, 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 and that's what gives us the victory. That's what makes the difference between us being victims and being victorious. That's what makes the difference. And we have to, once, you, once you add God in this equation, in verse number 21 it says, Be not overcome of evil, but what? Overcome evil with good. With good. Don't give them a piece of your mind. Hold on to them pieces. Amen. <laughs> you might need them. Hold on to them. Yes. Okay, so how would you handle, and I know I've been in this situation, where, let's say customer service, they did me wrong or something, or I'm at the restaurant, and yeah. they did me wrong, and, yeah. and I know they did. Right. So I know there's a time in the season and all that, so how would...
Well, I'm gonna tell you, you can you can ask for people to do what's right. You can ask them, but if they don't do it, then what? You can't make them. That's what we get into a problem. We don't make them do right. Uh, you them, them, that, that, you didn't do me right. You gonna uh, uh, you gonna do? I'm gonna make you do right. Yeah, you may not be able to make them. Then what you gonna do? Nigga wrong. I was talking to some brothers today. We're talking about I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. Mm -hmm. it's about position. And I was talking about how in my position, I have been called every name but the child of God at work. Mm. But I have my CEO position on. <laughs> and I respond, you know, like, oh, really? Very interesting. Right. Let me write that up. Right. I did not get you a level, but I have my CEO hat on. Mm -hmm. I don't walk through that on the street. Well, that, but that's the struggle for us. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to tell you, our orientation is, we've been taught, don't take that from people. <laughs> no, you don't have to take that. I'm going to tell y'all the truth. Yes, we do. Y'all probably don't want to hear it. Yes, you do. You got to take it. All of it. <laughs> you got to take it. You can, don't be trying to handle it yourself all the time. Don't be trying to handle it yourself because, let me, let me remind you, the wrath of man work if not the righteousness of God. Alright, so, I'm going to tell you, there's going to be some stuff that we're not going to be able to change. I'm going to tell you what happens. The enemy see us coming. And he'll get in people. I mean, I had a situation where the enemy got into somebody and they said something and it, it, it kind of like hit a, hit a button with me. It struck a nerve. And it disturbed my peace. And I'm going to tell you, I had to woo saw about 10 minutes. <laughs> I, 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 had to, I had to, I was taking deep breaths because I knew I, was, I wasn't in a good place. I wasn't in a good place, and I'm gonna tell you. And, but that's how quick that can happen. Yeah. And then when you rehearse it, you're like, "Wait a minute, nah, I let that get me over there." I don't like when my peace get disturbed. I don't know how y'all feel about it. I don't like it. I just, I just don't like it. It bothers me when I let when stuff disturb my peace. You know, I'm not, I'm not feeling centered like I need to be. Then I got to go away dealing with that. And then, and then, and then, if, if I say too much, I'm not even saying if I use the wrong language or any of that kind of stuff. I'm not saying that. But you know how sometimes you you actually get into a bit of a debate with somebody, and you feel like you know what? I shouldn't have been in that debate. And that really, if it really was an argument, you know when you get an argument. I know. Let me just let me just say, I know some of the saints love to argue. Many amen. Maybe y'all don't agree with me. I believe some of the saints, they like confrontation. I mean, feed off of you. I dare you come by with it. They be flat footed like this. You know, they be like, I, 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 I got up, boys. I dare you to say something to me. <laughs> That's true. Uh, Proverbs says only uh, pride comes with contention. Yes, sir. So a lot of times it's our pride that's been insulted. Absolutely. That makes us want to respond to But you know what? We in control of that. In other words, we allow our, our pride to be insulted. So what? They didn't agree with you. You know, some people just can't handle it when people don't agree with them. Amen. Can I let y'all in on a little secret? Everybody not going to agree with you. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> you say, what? You're kidding, right? <laughs> I mean, and, and some folks, they just kind of keep going back at them and tell them, well, you're going to agree with me. I, you know what I do with people like that? I'm like, okay, you are. <laughs> now what you got? They ain't getting nothing. If you're the one that wins, what'd you get? 
Your, your peace still disturbed. You know, you be upset. You didn't do all that fighting to get your way. You ain't even happy that you got your way. But now you the one, and you, you, you upset for a whole hour. You can't even enjoy your victory. <laughs> you can't even enjoy it. You got to go pray. Try to get centered again. Because you, you're pretty sure you ran the Holy Ghost off. <laughs> you're going to talk in tongues and make sure you still got it. <laughs> I know y'all never had to do that, but let me make sure I'm still saying ta 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 ta. <laughs> you know, because I mean, really, you can get in a fight so bad, you can feel like I must have bashed it. <laughs> I know, I'm telling you the truth. <laughs> you, <laughs> you, you know, you felt like you bashed it. You're not sure. You just, you just count on the grace of God. Counting on the grace of God. I wanted to see, I know we're gonna get to all of this tonight. Um, you know what? I'm not gonna start this next section, but I would just tell you that uh, as we because it's a little bit long and I don't want to rush through it. Yeah, and I know we got um, we got revival this week, we want people to come back for revival. And I don't know if is there a rehearsal tonight. No rest, okay, good. So people can come back for revival. I don't know if people have outreach. We have outreach tomorrow, right? We got outreach tomorrow, so I want to give you a little bit of a break. But let me just say this, that what I want us to realize is it is, it is actually a change of attitude. Uh, let me finish up that Psalms 3. Uh, Psalms 3. It is a change of perception. He says, but thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory, and the lifter up of my head. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill. Get this verse number five. I laid me down and slept and awaked, for the Lord sustained me. Now, he started out to, I'm going to stop right there. He started out talking about they are numbering me. But here he says, I lay down and slept. You know, you can sleep when you know who on your side. You, who the victor? Who the victor? Who the victim? He sleep. Absalom and his folks are trying to figure out how to get him. But he was able to sleep. I'm telling you, there's a difference between being the victim and being the victor. We got to decide which one we are. I know which one God intends for us to be. The one we, we end up being depends on our mindset. Yeah. All right, give the Lord some praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let us stand. Let us stand. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you. Hallelujah. Dear God, we're so grateful tonight. We thank